Hello, this is Dr. Behrang Eskarian. I am an associate professor at Washington State University, a faculty at the Mechanical Engineering Department. I am also a licensed professional engineer at PE in the state of Washington. My area of expertise is thermal fluids. Uh, this video is about solving um, um, a, a, an example of external flow over a flat plate. Before watching this video, again, um, I um, suggest that you go back and watch two videos that I uh, posted about uh, the local friction coefficient and you know average friction coefficient and five different categories of you know external flow uh, problems over a flat plate. I provided the links in the description. Check those out first and then come here. So now. Let's say you already know about all the five categories, how to solve these problems. So let's just take a look at the problem and solve it. Okay, go ahead, read the problem. Okay, so the problem is a circuit board. We have a circuit board that uh, we're using a fan probably or something like that to cool it down. This is what, the, this is the information that we have. So this is the circuit board probably. And there's like a fan or something to cool it down. All right, cool. Um, the values of, you know, the, the dimensions are given. They're in inches. We have to convert them to, you know, meters because we're going to solve the problem in basic SI units. But you know, everything is pretty much straightforward and is given. And this is the value of L. Velocity is given 10 meters per second. It says, it doesn't say anything about the plate being smooth or whatever. It could be a smooth plate, the circuit board, right? It could be mild as a you know, smooth plate. However, if you take a look at this problem, there's one key information that you need to pay attention to. And that is, this is a circuit board. And because it's a circuit board, there are some electronic components such as, you know, capacitors, resistors, you know, things like that are installed on this thing. If we have, you know, capacitors and, you know, the resistors and things like that on it, they're going to trip the boundary layer, even if this circuit board is modeled as a smooth surface. Because we have resistors and capacitors, it's, they are going to trip the boundary layer. Once they trip the boundary layer, the flow becomes entirely turbulent from the very beginning, no matter what Reynolds number is. It doesn't matter if Reynolds number turns out to be more than 5 times 10 to the fifth or less than 10, 5 times 10 to the fifth. In any case, this is going to be turbulent flow. So um, right off the bat, before uh, uh, this is, I, I can predict, this is going to be either category three, depending on Reynolds number. And if Reynolds number is more than 10 to the seventh, I'll probably have to you know, treat it as category five and go to that chart that we had and just pick the value from there. But this is not going to be category one or two at all. It's not going to be mixed flow or laminar flow. So our best bet is to calculate Reynolds number and um, based on that, we can make a decision if we can use an equation or of category three, or we have to go to the chart, you know, category five problem. Uh, first, you have to, for sure, convert the 24 inches and 18 inches to meters because um, well, you need it. Um, so let's do that. Uh, length is supposed to be 24 inches. 24 inches equals, you have to multiply this by... Um, um, basically is 24 times 2.54 times 10 to the negative second meters. That's, you know, because one inch is 2.54 centimeters. And that would be uh, 0.609, something like this, meters. That would be length. And W, which is 18 inches, 18 inches um, equals 18 times 2.54 times 10 to the negative second meters, that turns out to be 0.4572. So make sure you know you calculate these numbers using your calculators to make sure I am giving you the correct values. 
Okay, so this is W and that's L. I got these two values. That's good. Based on this, I can even calculate the, the area, which I'm going to need later. That would be L times W. So if you calculate L times W, multiply these two, you're going to get some uh, number like 20, 0.2787 meters uh, squared, something like this. So we're going to need this later because we want to calculate the drag force. Okay, now. Let's calculate the Reynolds number. Let's see where we are at. Reynolds number, this is, let's just uh, look, look at this. This is air at 100 kPa and uh, temperature is 20 Celsius. In order to calculate density, you can use ideal gas law. I already did it for you. You can use ideal gas law and uh, calculate density. It's already given. And you can go to the tables and uh, to find the uh, air, air's uh, viscosity is mostly you know, dependent on temperature. So you just uh, go to the whatever table you have and find the viscosity of air at temperature 20 degrees Celsius, which is already given in basic SI in its Pascal seconds. So we have these two. We don't have to worry about a whole lot of things here, um, to be honest with you. And you can just calculate the value uh, for, you know, for, for calculating Reynolds number. For regular problems, when these things are not given, you have to go to some tables and, you know, find the properties. But for the sake of simplicity, and we just want to be fast here, I just, uh, you know, provided the values. So Reynolds number would be rho times V times L over mu, rho is given. So let's just do it. That would be 1.188 kilograms per meters cubed times velocity, which is given as 10 meters per second times the length, length that is calculated 0.6096 meters over viscosity. Viscosity happens to be point zero. How many zeros is that? It's like four. One, two, three, four. From what I see here, 1825 Pascal second. That is viscosity. I already calculated the value of uh, Reynolds number and it turns out to be, it is a three, nine, six, um, eight, nine, eight. You can go ahead and uh, you know double check this to see if uh, I calculated correctly. Um, this value turns out to be less than five times ten to the fifth, and this is the the confusing and the, that's the trick part of this question because you might be like, "Why? Well, well, this Reynolds number is less than five times ten to the fifth, so this is laminar flow." No, it's not. You have turbulators, you have the capacitors and the resistors. They they're going to trip the boundary layer. This is, and no matter what, doesn't matter that Reynolds number is less than five times to the fifth. This is an entirely turbulent flow. And if, uh, um, and since Reynolds number is less than 10 to the, uh, which is definitely less than 10 to the seventh, I can kind of categorize this a good, with a good approximation as category three. Again, what is category three? Go back and watch those videos that I provided the link for in the description. And uh, there's a video that I you know, uh, showed all the five categories of external flow over flat plate. So you take a look at that video, then come back here, you'll know what I mean by category three. So for category three, the, three, the, um, the average friction coefficient equation that we showed there is 0 0.074 over Reynolds number Reynolds L uh, point two. That is the equation. So I just calculate this and I should be just good to go after this. CF average is um, 74, all right, over Reynolds number 396898.2. And uh, it turns out to be 0.005617. That is going to be your, um, you know, um, friction coefficient. Once I have this, I can calculate the value of drag force. The drag force would be fric average friction coefficient times dynamic pressure, dynamic pressure times the area. This will give me the correct value. So um, drag force in Newton would be 0.005617. 56, 17 times one over two times density. Density was 1.188, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, kilograms per meters cubed times 10 
meters per second squared, like this, times the area. Area turned out to be, I calculated here, 0.2787. And it was basic assignments, 0.2787 meters squared. And the drag force, you can go ahead and calculate it, but the value that they have after I calculated it is 0 0.09. 3 0 2 newton this is the drag force caused by air on this circuit board this was a pretty interesting problem because you know uh, when you calculate Reynolds number you might think oh this is lamer flow no we have stuff that can trip the boundary layer Okay, uh, one more time. Uh, make sure that uh, you watch those videos uh, uh, that I provided the link for and um, um, you know, make sure that you subscribe to this channel. I try to upload one video a day in the area of uh, thermal fluids in general. Well, thank you very much.